Hi, this is Rochelle and I'm back with another Timu, mostly craft haul, craft supplies, craft tools, things like that. Uh, I have two orders. This one I've had for quite a while. I just recently received this one. If you would like to know order dates and arrival dates, let me know in the comments and I will give you that information. But everything arrived within the time that uh, Timu said it would arrive. And I just want to point out that I am not sponsored. I'm not an affiliate. Uh, I don't have a code or anything like that to give you. Sorry about that. But I'll tell you what I really think. So let's go ahead and dive into these. This is the first one, so I'm going to open it first. As you can see, their packaging is a little... It leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> Ooh, I don't like that. <sighs> okay, I'm going to take everything out so you can see what I'm seeing here. All right, so this could have been packaged a lot better. Hopefully I can fix this. This is, let's move this one over. So this is a stencil. I've ordered another stencil. However, it was bent in the packaging. Let's take it out of the plastic. To reiterate what I said in the previous video, which I will link up above in the iCard, I order directly from a browser. I do not have the app. So, other than the way it was packaged and balled up in the bag, the stencil seems fine. Um, I'll see if I can fix it. Maybe if I hit it with the heat tool a little and put one of my big scrapbook paper books or a couple of them on top, it'll flatten it out. So I'll try that and see if that works. I'm going to move that out of the way for now. These are the other stencils that I got. So this was like mostly a stencil haul. Um, this has little dragonflies and stars in a cascading uh, pattern, I guess you would say. So yeah, that's what that looks like. And I guess you can use it from either side and make it go either direction. I think that's pretty nice. Still has some of the cut pieces in it. Then this one is Alpha. All right, so that is what that one looks like. Let me set it down so you can, oh, I didn't see that. So you can get a better look at it. Uh, maybe if I put a piece of color, something behind it, you can see it. Nope. That's better, okay. So, all right, and also I'm, someone made me aware that some of the items at Timu are knockoffs specifically for Tim Holtz and that I should do my research. However, I do not follow Tim Holtz like that. So I don't know every product that Tim Holtz has out. So if you see anything here um, that is a knockoff, it was not purchased purposely. I did not know. Okay. So yeah, this is another stencil. This is a sunflower. And of course, if you know me, you know that I love those, so I couldn't resist that. It's fairly simple. And I think these are, the smaller ones are six by six. And the larger one, let's see. Yeah, six by six. And that larger one, I think it's supposed to be A4 size, so a round letter size. It looks like it is A4. Uh-huh. So about 11 and three quarters, something like that, yeah, by eight and a quarter. Okay, it's probably a little longer um, because of the little loop at the top. All right, then I got this die, which goes with this set of stamps. Now, I, when I first started looking on Timu, I wanted this set. Um, and by the time I got around to getting up the nerve to actually place an order, 
it was no longer available. So I did do the little thing where you can get a notification. How can I get into this? So once this was in, I got a notification, but when I went, I think it only had the die. And I mean, what use is the die without the stamps? So I waited and waited. And then finally they had both in stock again and I was able to get them. I really, really wanted this because I want to do a detective slash Sherlock Holmes type um, journal. So it has a die cut for him for the car and for the pipe. And these say all geared up to celebrate. Lucky me because I have you. It's your day. Awesome at any age. You're a classic. So I look forward to using that. I can make journaling cards, tags, all kinds of things with that. All right, then I got this just because I wanted to try it out. I wanted to make my own sticker book. So that's like when I have leftover stickers uh, from my planner or from the uh, sticker sheets that I get, then I can make myself a book or something. These are uh, sticker re or release sheets, release sheets. I think they use these with diamond paintings, um, but I think I can put stickers on, on here and then limit the extra sticker sheets that I have. So if you don't know, I do have another channel, Scrap Craftastic, where I do weekly planner setups and uh, planner related DIYs, things like that. Live streams, a lot of live, live streams lately. So when I have a sheet like this, I don't really wanna keep this whole sheet. Um, so I would like to have a way to store these stickers or if I want to have something where I can just tuck it in on, and use it on the go, that would be nice. Just put the stickers that I use the most on that sheet. But this will free up some space for uh, other stickers. And I am low on sticker storage space. So hopefully this will work out. I hope so. I wish I could get them in the bigger sheets and I know they're available on Amazon, but I wanted to try it on Timu and this was the size that they had. And I think these are A6, so about four by six ish size. So now my only issue is binding them because they are so small. If I punch them, I'm gonna lose space. Maybe I could do some kind of perfect binding. I don't know, but it appears that this will work. Yeah. So, so far, I know I would need to let them sit on here for a while to see how it goes. Um, but so far it seems to work. Let's not put anything too close to that side. And I'm thinking I, it's double sided so I can use both sides let's see just testing so again i don't want to put anything over there too close because i don't know how i'm going to bind these and everything that i got i'm pretty sure is fairly inexpensive um i want to say most everything was less than five dollars I might have went over the $5 limit threshold, but I will try to list everything that I can in the description so you can go over and take a look and see for yourself. Uh, if you are interested, let's put this one down too. So yeah, so that saves that whole sheet. That can go. I've reduced it down to a smaller sheet and I can add even more stickers on here to reduce uh, my stickers so that is good again I would like a bigger size but this is good and I think he has 200 sheets in here so that's plenty and it appears to work well so the a6 release paper is what I got now that was everything from the first order let's go on to the next order and I will be demonstrating some of these products uh, once we finish unboxing everything. All right, I'm gonna set this over here out of the way this time. Let's open this up. This is one of those 
stamp press thingies. Uh, so when you're using a stamp platform or a large block, I did get the big one. You use this to press down on the stamp and make a, this sticks onto here, I'm sure. But you use that. It reminds me of the air hockey thing. I used to love air hockey, but yeah, that's kind of what this is. It has a little, it's not a foam, it's a hard felt here. And again, this would stick to this. I want to take my time and put it on just right, so I won't do it now, but I will see how this works. So I got some stamps. This is a phone booth, telephone booth. Hopefully you can see that. It's fairly large stamp. I expected it to be a little smaller. I don't remember if I checked the measurements or not, but this is pretty big, good, decent size. It is about seven and a half in height and about two and a half, two and three quarters wide. So very nice size. Uh, yeah, so another stamp. This one is, this one I wasn't really sure about if this was a knockoff or not. I couldn't, I didn't find anything that said it was or, you know, that made me think that it was, but it very well could be. So you got a postcard, a laundry, uh, gloss, whatever that is, label. Um, this looks like some kind of ticket and some other script and text. So I got that one, and then this, I think I already have something similar to this. This is just different borders. They are approximately four inches in length. So, and that's what they look like. Let me do, I take it out. You can see it better. Probably should have took the other ones out too. Probably, let's, let's take them out. Again, if this is some kind of knockoff, because what I did know, I did see some on the website. And also, I don't know if this is the correct way that Timu operates, but I think there are different sellers. I mentioned this in my first Timu haul. The only reason that I went ahead and purchased was because I recognized the seller for the item that I was looking at. So, yeah, I don't, I don't. There may be a seller that's selling knockoffs. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Enough about the knockoffs. So let's open this one so you can see. And I know there's a glare, but I don't have this, the daylight on my side right now. Okay, so that's what that one looks like. Hopefully you can see it in this one. And then this one, Oop, it's already coming off the backing, not a good sign. <laughs> okay, then I got this die that I don't remember what it is. Oh, yes, I do. This is like uh, belts, closures. So I had a project where I made my own belt closure, but now I can use this. Uh, looks like they came apart during shipping, but you got one without the holes, one with the holes. You can put your eyelets in once you punch it. Um, I don't remember what these different pieces are. Some of them, these smaller pieces. I think this is like the loop that you can feed the belt through. So is this, so is this. So once you cut your paper, your uh, cardstock, you can feed it through. And then you got four different buttons here as well. I think that's a pretty good deal. We'll see how those cut. And I didn't give you size. The longest strap is four inches. Let's see, the smaller one is about two and a quarter inches in height and about seven eighths inches wide. Pretty sure this one, yeah, about seven eighths inches wide at the widest part, so. Mm -hmm. And the buckle itself is an inch and an eighth. Okay, that was good. Let's see what else we got. So let's dive into some napkins. This is another 
set of napkins. How many are in here? It doesn't say, but I think it's probably 20. And this is what they look like. Foreign languages. So I hope they don't say anything bad, but <laughs> these are the napkins. Let's see. And then here is another one. This is more of a floral, more shabby. I think more of the shabby type colors. And that's what that one looks like. Again, I, there's no way I would ever use all of these. So I will probably be making bundles sometime in the near future. I'm just trying to collect enough so that I have enough, you know, to make a nice bundle. This is another set. This one has fewer napkins in it, I think. This is Lotus Leaf. That's what it's called. Pretty simple design. I loaded up on the napkins. Then this one has roses, butterfly. This butterfly looks kind of cartoonish. Um, this one is okay. Then it has the corners. You can use all of those individually. That's what it looks like on the back. Okay, here is another stencil, another alpha stencil. I hope I can save the one that was crumpled. So this has alpha and numbers as well. I wonder how close it is to the six by six. It's probably not really the same. No, cause I don't think this one doesn't have numbers. Okay, so another stencil. Then let's see what we got in our bag of goodies. All right, I just took everything out so I don't have to keep going back to the bag. So this is washi tape. Let's see what it looks like. It doesn't look like there's very much on the rolls, which is fine. Okay. So these are, this is like a matte pattern. And this is how much you get on the roll. Uh, it does feel papery. Doesn't have like that shiny coating that some tapes have that say they're washi tape. Ooh, what is this? Okay, that tore easily. Oh no. This is that tape. <laughs> Let's cut this on and cut this off. This is that tape that has the backing paper on it, I think. Yeah, ugh. Don't like that at all. Okay which means I'll have to use this up really, really quick because it's hard to store, but it's very, very thin washi. It's very thin, so it's really papery. That's what the back of it looks like, and I'm just gonna use that to seal it. So yeah, I'll use this up in collages probably because that backing paper is a headache. So there's that one. I'm not gonna even, this one has little ice coupons. Let's see if this, nope, this one is the same way. Man, so I'm gonna guess all of these are. Can't really tell what this one is. It's very small, but it looks like some kind of vintage receipts or something. This one is fragile says fragile and I can tell that it is one of those. This one has music notes on it. This one says something about do. <laughs> Some foreign language washi tape. These would really be nice like to add accents to Masterboards and collages. This one has alpha. Which I really like the font. It's like a gothic feel to it. Then this one has ads. But again, they all have that backing paper. So be careful. I didn't even think to look for that. but I would definitely not have gotten them with the backing paper. But yeah, this one has different ads on it. All right. 
hopefully I didn't pay too much for that again I will list all of these items in the description box below in case you are interested let's go to the laces real quick so this is a repurchase I've been using a lot of this and I probably won't buy any more color because I can stain the white myself but I really wanted this color so and I think when I ordered before they didn't have it but it comes in black a cream color this color the white and I wanted all four colors of course so now I have them but yeah I just think it's a really pretty lace or trim so I got those two and this one is a more inexpensive lace I do have a shopping cart that is uh, loaded right now I don't know if I'll ever check out with it but I do have one um, that is loaded with laces and trims because I want to just be able to use the laces and trims without worrying about running out and I didn't really have much of a stash but this is what this one looks like and I didn't mention uh, the length but again I'll list information that I can in the description box below this one is pretty it looks like it has some snags or something all right it's double folded so here we go yeah it was, just wasn't cut very well on that end this is what it looks like how does that go I don't know which way it goes I think it goes like that pretty sure yep that's the front so that one is pretty it's got lots of sheer on it okay I think that's it for the lace let's jump to these corners so in the previous in the previous haul I did buy the corners the book corners or they're faux book corners actually uh, but I got the the really bright cheap gold looking ones <laughs> So, and they didn't have anything but those at the time. But while I was shopping this time, they had these that look a little more vintage, look a little more realistic. So, and you don't necessarily have to use these as book corners. They are fairly thin and a little pliable. Uh, you can like make your own little shapes and decorative uh, bits to add maybe to the front of a journal um so something like this i don't know how you would make that work but that's kind of just an idea that i had to use them in a different way instead of just as corners maybe put them together like this have some um stone or crystal or something in the center depending on what you're using it on different little ways you can use them not just but corners you can use them as just embellishments in general. Okay, and I like that they come in the little plastic box to keep them nice and neat. Let's see what else we got going on here. Let's go back to stamps. Um, so this one, I was a little nervous about. I hope it's not a knockoff. I don't think it was. I did look to make sure, <laughs> but I wasn't 100% sure. So this is numbers and yeah, there's not much to say about that. They are numbers. I want to hold them up so you can see. So you get one through zero in different sizes. You get the NO, the abbreviation for number in different sizes and fonts. You get them attached. You get this unattached so you can create whatever number sets you would like i wanted that one because it's versatile all right then we got this one this one is like more of a mixed media markings type of set so it has squiggly lines coffee rings even though that's really small for a coffee ring or just like a marking swatches different swatches uh like a splatter more rings just different mixed media splotches swatches squiggly lines that you would use 
for art journaling maybe, for adding interest to a journal page. It's got a drip. That would be good in like a Gothic journal. Okay, so there's that one. Then this one, I do like the postcards and I'm building my stash of postcards and stamps. I think I have enough now. So this is a postcard and it is just the outline of the postcard. So you can stamp, see there? You can stamp whatever you want on the inside of the postcard. So you can choose from these. Um, and I, I think I got one similar to this, but this one has more of an ornate border. Let's see the size. This one is three and three quarters by about two and three quarters. So by the time you stamp it, could you make it four by six? No, you would probably make it three by five. So it would probably, I don't know. You could make it bigger depending on how much border you leave around this edge, the decorative edge. And I can't really see what these say. It's very small. That looks like the Statue of Liberty. You got like a cameo look here, butterfly here, vintage. I think that says vintage mail. Not sure what those say. So there's that. You got the little squiggly lines uh, for the postal mark. There's that. Let's go with this. This is dies. They measure. I'm not going to take them out of the plastic. About two and a half by four. And it's just a decorative shape. So you can use this as a frame, the outside. The inside you can use as a label. So you can use both pieces that get cut. And it's just a decorative edge or a frame. Okay. This one I really, really like because it is a little bigger. This one... It's four and three quarters by three and three quarters approximately. I think it's a little bigger. Let's compare. Yeah, considerably larger. And it has a decorative design on it. And again, I can, it says postcard here. I can put the stamps on here and other deco pieces. So there you go with that one. Then I have this one, which I, I don't know what I was thinking when I bought this one. This is more stencils. So what am I buying? I'm buying dies, stamps, napkins, stencils, and lace for the most part. A few other things in between like the washi tape, but mostly just those things. So these are the stencils. They measure the full size three by about six so three by six and there's different foliage plants florals and i don't remember how many you get okay so we got a lot to go through another floral so kind of botanical look i thought this one was a really good deal because you do get so much. They're small, but the when you look at the grand scheme of things, it's pretty. It's fairly large uh, elements on the stencils, or that the stencils make. Look at that one. That looks like evergreen leaf. This looks like a duplicate. Is it? Oh, no, they're different. Okay. That one. I like that one with the little curly cues. This one. And then that one. So you can dress these up, make them for more Christmassy. You can make them look, use them in a botanical uh, design. This looks like a fern. Um, not sure what that is. 
don't know my flowers, but I know what I like, and I like greenery. So, and there's lots of greenery in here. So there you go, that is the set of stencils. Now we're gonna move on to these. These are frames in different styles and shapes. And I'm gonna take them out so that I can investigate a little more. So this set, let's see what this set says. It is Baroque Circle. I think it says 10 pieces. So that's nice. Whoa. Okay. So we're not, I don't know if we're gonna go through all of them. Pretty sturdy cardstock. Um, I don't think they're self adhesive. Yes, they are. They're self adhesive too. Wow. Okay. And quite sturdy. Got two of these. I don't know which way is up for those. Did I get two of each? Or are they just very similar? I think they're just similar okay so that's that set this one this one is morandi morandi decoration these look a little more modern a little bit they kind of look more like mats rather than frames photo mats or you could turn them into cabinet cards I like these. I'm always wanting frames, but it's really a headache to cut <laughs> once you find them. Okay, so those are nice. Happy, happy with those. Not crazy about the, the white offset on these. That's nice. these what was this one called Lolita tea party hmm. all right so that is it that is the Timu haul so we got dies we got lots of stamps some new napkins to play with quite a few we got lace we've got washi tape that's the only thing that I'm a little unhappy with is the washi tape and the bent up stencil that I have to work on. Other than that, I am happy with everything. The release papers are good. I wanna play around with this to see how well it works. I'm sure it works fine. The stencils, the stamps, everything is probably really good. Um, but we will test some of it out, so stay tuned. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna start with the Sherlock Holmes stamps and I am using my Tim Holtz stamp platform. I'm still not very good with using this but because my um, acrylic block collection is limited, I don't have uh, larger blocks, I decided to use the platform to try to stamp these. I think the Sherlock Holmes and the car would fit on a, my acrylic block but I'm sure that the phone booth would not so I'm starting out with black archival ink. I'm not sure that my ink pad is very juicy, uh, but I am attempting to use it. And I'm using the stamp press from Timu to see how it works. It seems to work fine. I think the main issue I had here was that my ink pad is almost dry. I had the magnet by Sherlock Holmes in a bad location. So his hat wasn't stamping completely. And I don't know. I just don't have good luck with this stamp platform with the clear stamps. Then I put a cushion underneath. I had another foam cushion. I couldn't find it. This just all was not working out very well. So this is the result. It didn't come out very well. 
So I decided to use my acrylic block to stamp Sherlock Holmes and the car again. So I'm just using white cardstock and the archival ink and just stamping directly. And with that, I got a very nice impression. So I'm happy with the stamps. It was not the stamps fault. It was user error and really tool and equipment error. I just don't have the right tools for a larger stamp. So I'm going to use the ones that I stamped with the platform to cut out with the dies. And I have never done this before. I do have a few stamps that come with dies. I just haven't used them. And so this will be my first attempt at doing this. I am taking off the little connector pieces. I use uh, some jewelry pliers to remove those. And I wrap those up in a piece of washi tape before I throw those in the trash just to make sure that they don't fall out and end up on the floor or anything like that. So I'm just lining up the die around the stamped image and using a bit of washi tape to hold it in place. So once I have everything lined up and taped down, I am ready to run it through my die cutting machine. However, I forgot the sandwich order, so I'm just using the book that came with the instructions as a reference to make sure I have everything stacked correctly. And I am running it through my mini Gemini. And it cut great. So the stamping wasn't the best uh, on Sherlock Holmes. The only th the part that wasn't stamped well was the front of his hat, but I think we're good with that. The car stamped perfectly fine. So I am running that through to cut it. And it cut out perfectly as well. So I am happy with the stamps and the dies from Timu. I have not had any issue with any of them. Uh, I know people say that the stamps are cheap and not good and that the dies don't cut. I have not had that happen. And also, I mean, I mentioned this earlier in the video. Keep in mind that Timu isn't making these products. These are coming from different sellers. So I don't know how you could say all of the dies and stamps don't work or that they're poor quality when it's completely different sellers. So here I am going to cut the frames, um, just testing out these dies as well, taping them down, making sure that they don't move, that I have them in a good position. And as you can see here, the frame cut out perfectly. It cut the frame and I also have the inside piece that I can use as a label or for whatever purpose. So both of those cut perfectly fine. I just use regular white cardstock. Just playing around seeing how I could use the pieces that I've stamped and cut. The ink feels a little sticky on these. I'm not sure if it's the paper or what's going on. I don't usually have that issue with the archival ink, but I think maybe it had to do with the paper that I used. Okay, so those work great. Let's move on and check out some of the postcard stamps. So I just cut an eight and a half by 11 into four pieces. And again, I'm using the platform because I don't have an acrylic block large enough for this stamp. And again, I have the same problems where it doesn't really stamp all the way. I think if I had some type of cushion underneath the platform that that would help but I still think I would have issues with clear stamps with this platform. I should have used one of my other platforms, but I didn't think of it at the time. 
just cleaning up where I got ink in an area that I didn't want to get it. I'd already smudged it, but I'm still going to use the card. <laughs> so this is what it looked like when I finished stamping it. The stamp is perfectly fine. It's just this platform does not like me. I decided to use a different ink and see what would happen. This is a dye ink, a Ranger dye ink. It's the brown color. And it stamped considerably better. So it may have just been the ink that was giving me an issue. Then I'm going to try the uh, postcard frame. And again, I'm using the brown ink instead of the archival ink. Making sure I don't have any on the actual platform. Using my stamp press. And giving it another try. And that stamped good. I'm happy with that. So these are the postcards that I stamped. And these are the die cut pieces. So all the stamping and die cutting. So now I'm going to make a little project with some of the other dies. This is the belt die or the closure die is what I was calling it. Uh, so I have some craft card stock and I'm going to cut out the pieces for that die set a couple of times. And it cut with no problem, just poking out the holes. I'm going to go ahead and cut the pieces again. And then here are the smaller pieces, as well as the other uh, belt piece. All right, so now we have all the pieces cut out. And I am going to store my dies in this clear envelope from Amazon. I will link to those in the description box below. So here I'm just picking the pieces apart, seeing what will fit on the belts. Uh, I think this is designed pretty much for card making. I think also that the Sherlock Holmes set of stamps and dies is also really for card making, but I am going to use these for journal making. So I am trying to figure out a way to actually make this belt and the belt links a closure. So I'm just testing out the different pieces, but here I'm going to show you all the individual pieces from that die set once they were cut out. So you got the buttons, the belt buckles, and the little hooks or prongs that go on the belt. So those are all the pieces. I have a piece of 110 pound card stock that I coffee stained. It's very heavy card stock. I cut that in half. Then I'm going to score one piece at four inches and the other piece at five inches. And I'm going to use these to make a waterfall, an easy waterfall. So once I fold it, I have four pieces to my waterfall. Um, I can use this as a floating piece in a journal. I can actually glue it down. It just depends on how I want to use it. So in this case, it will be a floating piece. I am trying to decide how I'm going to add the belt pieces on. And I decided that I need to cut an additional strip to attach them to for them to work the way that I need them to work. So I was going to go vertically with the belt, but I had to change that. I just didn't like the way it was working. So now I'm going to go horizontally. And this is basically to hold the waterfall flaps in place. And I think going horizontally uh, gives me a few more options. So I'm just using a paper clip to hold the pieces together while I test out my strip that I cut. And this is just regular craft cardstock, 65 pound weight. So here I'm figuring out how to attach the strap to the strip 
that I created. So I'm going to use my Tombow Aqua Glue to attach it. And I'll have to repunch those holes, but that's fine because I am going to put eyelets in them. And then I just trimmed off the excess. Then I'm going to double it up. I'm layering the other piece of the belt strap with the holes in it on the back side. So that when you open the belt or the belly band, you see both sides are finished, basically. So here I'm going to gather two of the belt buckles to make it a little more sturdy. I was considering using this. Uh, but then once I tested it out, I wasn't sure that I would be able to easily slide the strap in and out with that. So I end up not using it. Here I am getting out some eyelets and I'm going to add the eyelets to the belt strap after I repunch the holes. Oh, and I took a pen and colored in the holes so that I could see them easier through the, um, the hole punch the We Are Memory Keepers eyelet setter. So here I'm setting the eyelets. And again, testing to make sure that this is going to fit and also deciding where exactly to place the other end of the strap so that I can also add a loop to it. Here I'm using a piece of the craft cardstock. I scored it in two places to fold it over and I'm going to use this piece to make my own belt loop. So I use the Tombow glue and while that is drying I am starting to train my belt strap to bend the way that I need it to bend. Again, trimming up any excess. So I'm just kind of loosening up the fibers of the paper, make it more pliable. And here I'm doing the same thing with the piece that I'm going to use for the belt loop. Just trying to loosen up the fibers and train the cardstock to fold the way that I need it to fold. So here I'm going ahead and adding the other end of the belt strap and I'm adding a piece on the front and on the back and I'm going to put the belt loop right on the edge where I added the other end of the strap so that the line that is created there does not show. So here again I'm testing the belt buckle that came with the die set and I'm just really not sure that that's going to work for me. So again, I created my own loop. Trimming it down. Again, training it and folding it to wrap around the belt strap. And now I'm going to use some fabric tack to glue the loop together. And I'm going to add that on to the belt strap, gluing it to what I consider the back side, even though both sides will be visible. So I'm just cleaning up some of the seepage of the glue with my glue remover. And using a small paper clip to hold that in place while it dries. And now I'm going to test fit, even though I have it going the wrong direction. I guess it could go either way, though. Just inking it up to give it more of a weathered vintage look. And what I've decided to do is make this a belly band on the front and the back. So I'm only putting glue on the ends, on the edges where it wraps around on the back side. And I'm just lining everything up, making sure everything is going to fit and make sure it is glued correctly and straight.
I'm also going to store the leftover die cut pieces in the same envelope with the dies. So I think I'll start doing that. That's a great way to keep up with them. So now that the belt is in place, I'm going to go ahead and do a three hole pamphlet stitch to combine these two pieces of cardstock. And that will hold the water fall pieces in place. So I'm just using some Baker's twine, some brown Baker's twine, and I'm doing my regular three-hole pamphlet stitch, the same thing I do when I'm binding a journal. And I wanted to end with the tails on the outside, and I'm going to use those to tie a bow. I can actually come back later also and add some type of charm or key or other element. Uh, I'm really just creating this as a base to use later. Having the tie on the outside leaves some room for embellishment as well. So this is what it looks like so far. Now here I'm gonna come in with some of the pieces that we stamped earlier, just to see if I can use anything from that, well, these are the pieces that we stamped and die cut. So I'm just seeing how I can incorporate some of that into this. Now I can incorporate all of it, but I, I'm not sure if I want this to be an academia piece, if I want this to be a detective piece. So I am trying to keep it just general, a general look. So for now, I am just lightly embellishing. I'm inking up one of the postcards that I stamped. And I'm actually gonna add that in the belly band on the back. So again, this piece will be a floating piece uh, for whatever journal or folio that I use it in. So the front and the back will be functional and embellished. I'm just inking up one of the centers of the frames that we cut. And I think I'm going to use that kind of as a label on the front. So I'm just marking where I want to glue that down at and gluing it in place. And I'm also going to make this like a pocket. So I'm only gluing on three sides. So it won't just be a label. It'll be a label and a pocket. So back to the stamps from Timu. I'm going to use one of these border stamps to add kind of a stitching look to the waterfall. Um, I'm just testing it out with the different inks. I tried the Distress uh, Vintage Photo ink, and then I went back to the Archival in black. I think the black looked better. So I'm just going to do the faux stitching on the edge of each flap of the waterfall. And here is the set of numbers. And I'm gonna use that to add numbers to the waterfall. Stamping again with the black archival ink. And one of my locks is in frame. <laughs> okay, so for the other postcard frame, I'm going to do something a little different. I am going to use one of the other script or receipt style stamps for it. And this one actually fits on my block. And I'm just going to ink it up and stamp it inside of that frame. So that postcard frame can be used for anything. It doesn't have to be a postcard. And then I'm just trimming it up very close to the edge. 
And there we have another piece of ephemera to add to the belly band on the back. I had this scrap piece of craft cardstock. It's a little bit different color craft cardstock. And I'm going to use it to make some small tags. And just using my angle punch from We Are Memory Keepers to make the angled corners. Those tuck right into the label pocket that I made. Inking around the edges just to give them some depth and a little added color. So I used Vintage Photo first and then lightly went around the edges with black soot. Again, I'm not adding any specific embellishments to this, just lightly embellished. So I decided I wanted a black tag as well. I used a piece of scrap cardstock and I'm adding it in. And this is the piece. I added the three tags. This is the belt loop. And this is what the waterfall looks like, ready to be embellished. I can add pockets. I can add envelopes, uh, case files, if I want to. Lots of different options with this. But this is the basic base of this. And here is the back with the belly band. So this is how I use some of the craft supplies and tools I picked up from Timu. Have you ordered from Timu? Have you tried their craft supplies? Let me know in the comments below what you think. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching, and I'll holla at y'all next time. Bye!